Colorado. If you're living in Colorado and you're trying to get started in real estate, this show's for you, right? Because I feel like a lot of the people in Colorado are feeling the pinch right now, dude. You're feeling the pinch. The market, it feels like in 2022, the market out there, dude, it's like literally freaking mile high. Get it? That was a pun on uh, Denver, mile high city. Also, smash cut, funny weed pun, high, high, high. I don't know. Throw that joke in there somewhere. Let's pretend I had a sweet one. Here's the deal. It's really expensive living out there in Colorado. And if you are like my client, T-Money, you are having trouble dealing with the Snoop Dogg level high pricing. I told you I'd get that good weed pun in there. The You're having trouble dealing with the housing pricing. It's, it's unaffordable. You can't hit your cash flow goals. So what do you do? You go where the money's at, not where you live. I'm going to help somebody do that, and I can help you too. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Today, today we are working with my man, T-Money. I like T-Money because he's actually a Cleveland native, right? Grew up in Cleveland Heights, and he moved out west to Colorado, right? Doing good over there. But T-Money is not a multimillionaire. No, T-Money's a regular guy. Regular guy like you, regular guy like me. When I got started investing in real estate in the Cleveland market, I was working at fucking Radio Shack, right? Who the fuck goes to – I mean, Radio Shack's, like, done, right? I think it went to bankruptcy. Then I think, like, Ty Lopez bought it. I don't know, dude. Weird thing, right? More of the stories, they didn't pay anybody at Radio Shack a lot of money. I was a 21-year-old kid managing freaking Radio Shack 55 hours a week, making under 30 k a year, right? But I started my real estate business. Smash cut 10 years later, 200. No, I lied. I was 21. Uh, was like 15 years later, something like that. Anyway, anyway more of the story. It's $200 million in sales. Largest portfolio of its kind in my market, the Northeast Ohio area. And I help people like T-Money. Investors all over the world do the same. But what T-Money's found, you can't get in to the Colorado market where he lives. You can't have a story like that, right? It's hard to have that story like, yo, dude, I was just a Radio Shack kid making 30 k and then I bought my first property in Denver, and, you know, smash cut 10 years later, I'm a millionaire, right? It's hard to have that story because the pricing is so high out there, you just can't afford to get into these investments. So what did Team Money do? He's like, dude, I'm going to live where I want. I'm going to live in Colorado, and I'm going to invest where it makes sense. It makes sense back in my hometown in Cleveland. And he hooked up with me. My team does all the on-the-ground work. He is a passive investor. And T-Money, I think you're really going to dig this one, bro. This is the cheapest duplex in Elyria. I like Elyria. Uh, 30, 35 minutes or so west of Cleveland. Super nice, high C, low B grade neighborhood. Cheapest duplex in the area, bro. Buy the cheapest house in the neighborhood. That is Real Estate 101. I looked at this probably a couple weeks ago, a week ago maybe, for a different client. They ended up going a different direction. still available, but I do think me and you need to move quick on it if you want it. So uh, we'll go to a quick break. I'm going to leave you with that footage, and you let me know if you want to put it in a bid. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. This this is the good part of the show. The meat and potatoes, okay? 6.30 East Avaliria, five days on the market, and I believe we're getting a big discount here. $78,900. Now, anybody who's uh, paying attention to my show or understanding what's going on with the Cleveland market knows if you're buying duplexes in decent C-ish grade neighborhoods, you're paying about a hundred grand. This one already deeply discounted at 78.9, and I think we could go a little bit further and get it for about 75. The question, why? Why do we have the ability to pick something that should normally be 100 
pick it up for 75. Why? Well, a couple reasons. Number one, when people look at the Cleveland market from all over the world because people are hearing things, they're seeing national publications, articles, this or that, they're hearing that Cleveland's the best cash flow market. Cleveland's the best cash flow market. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. All they do is say Cleveland. They forget to mention all the other areas in the greater Cleveland area, the other cities, and investors, right, from all over the world, they just narrow in on stuff that has a Cleveland address. This doesn't have a Cleveland address. This has an Elyria address, right? Elyria, whoop, getting tied up on the cord here. Elyria is about a half hour west of Cleveland, right? People heard about LeBron James, right? You know, you've heard of LeBron James. I would imagine if you're a, a living, breathing human being, you know who LeBron James is, right? Everybody knows LeBron James is from Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. LeBron James ain't from Cleveland, people. No, he's not. LeBron James is actually from a city called Akron. It's about 30 minutes south of Cleveland, right? Southeast, all right? So this is the same distance from the city of Cleveland as LeBron's hometown, but everybody just refers to everything as Cleveland, right? That's great. Because that means all the investors from nationwide are focusing in on the Cleveland properties, and I believe that artificially inflates their price a little bit. And then deals like this one fall through the cracks because nobody's paying attention, right? It's in the Cleveland market. My team, we handle it, $200 million in sales. We have tons of properties over here, right? To us, it's all the same, right? To the locals, it's all the same, right? To out-of-state folks, they don't ever pay attention to that. You never hear of Illyria. There ain't no... National publications, no articles on any investment website you're on where they're like, Elyria is a great place to invest. Nobody's ever said the name Elyria. It's a teeny little suburb, right? Cleveland, the Cleveland market, folks, multiple millions of people, right? I think it's three or f three to four million people, I believe, is in our metro area. Only like 340,000 of them actually live in the city of Cleveland. Think about that, right? In addition, I actually like the government in Elyria better than the government in Cleveland. Now, that's one reason why the price is so low. Second reason it's falling through the cracks here is, well, the, <laughs> the listing agent, God bless his soul, hasn't done anything, okay? As far as pictures go, we got one picture, nothing else. What did he have to say about the property? Not a damn thing, a completely blank listing. Didn't say what the rents were, didn't write not one word about the property. Literally did next to nothing bare minimum effort this is not the appropriate way to market a property but that's okay i dug deep found out some info for you guys the tenants are paying 500 bucks a month in rent now you have no insight into what's going on at this property you have no idea what it looks like you have no idea what the conditions is uh and you don't know what the rents are unless you're talking to me and i've just told you they're 500 right so you have no clue what's going on well guess what here's the skivvy here's what you really need to know here's the information you're going to have that everybody else doesn't have 500 that's below market rent month-to-month -month tenants below market your market rates for these units are 650 and 750 we got a one one a two one should be bringing in market 168 of that 168 i believe after fixed and variable expense estimates you'll be netting approximately 78 78 i believe we can get it at 75 because nobody's paying attention to Elyria. number one number two <laughs> the marketing there's like nothing for anyone to work off of right uh so because of that i think we can get it at 75 that means you pick this up only 18,750 out of your pocket bank kicks in the rest and that folks would be a 27 percent cash on cash return if you can get those current tenants up to market rate We'd want to do so by slowly increasing the rents. We wouldn't want a turnover to occur because I'm going to tell you some more information that's not in the listing. And you know what? This is information that you're going to get when you've sold $200 million worth of real estate. Here's the deal. This is not something you should anticipate. The units are brand spanking new. No. Long term, month to month, below market rate tenants. When those tenants move out, you're not just sweeping and then putting in new tenants at market rate. No. You're doing a full turnover, right? You're probably looking at like between five and 15 grand, depending on what's going on, right? Uh, walls, carpet, probably new kitchen, new bath uh, fixtures, okay? It's probably what's going to happen. That's what you need to anticipate. So we don't want to just jack their rent up and have them move out because we don't want to spend that money, no. Instead, we go up slowly, 25, 25, 25, and get them up to market rent without ever creating a turnover, never paying for that turnover, right? Turnovers are what kill your returns, guys. Not getting a thousand bucks a month for a seventy-five thousand dollar property. It cash flows right now. Okay, so everything we get is going to be cherry, right? You want to get more rent without incurring a turnover. 
And as far as your big ticket items, roof, hot water tank, furnace, do not expect any of them to be brand new because they are not. Now, back to my chart. As you see, I have a little something here, $840 a year for capital expenditures, okay? That's money you're saving. You actually get that money right now, okay? That's your money. But I'm not allowing you to consider that return, right? It, I don't hold it. It goes to you. So you can spend it on freaking hookers and cocaine if you want. But what you need to understand is that's fairy dust, <laughs> different than the dust you're shoving up your nostrils. Uh, you're not actually making that money because you have some big bills that are going to be coming up. A roof is about $7,000. Roofs last about 30 years. This property don't got a new roof. When we get it inspected by the third-party home inspector, I'm sure it's going to say it's got, you know, the last five years or so of its life cycle, right? Ten, five to ten. It's going to be in the back end. Furnaces cost about three grand. We're going to be in the back end of those. They last 30 years. How water tanks, they cost a grand. We're going to be on the back end of those, right? So they last, uh, cost, cost about a grand to replace, last about 15 years. We're going to be the back end of all three of those things. That's why I want you saving 840 a year and preparing for when those bills eventually come because they will. But hey, guess what? We're picking this thing up at 75K and a property basically in the exact same condition, properly marketed with a Cleveland address. We get you a very similar tenant base, very similar rent rates, be in the same or similar condition and it'd cost you about 100,000. So this deal is a screamer, but ain't nobody but you knows it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.